Hello and welcome to another edition of The Moore Show, alternative late night talk. And I'm your host, Kevin Moore. My guest today is internationally acclaimed psychic clairvoyant Patricia Brooks. Over the past 30 years, Patricia has used her gift to provide consultations and workshops worldwide. Patricia sees everything she predicts in a visionary form given to her by a higher self. So without further ado, Patricia Brooks, welcome to the show. It's lovely to be talking to you. Thank you very much. And our first show as well. So I'm really excited about that as well. I understand that you're writing a new book right now, or a couple of new books. Could you tell us a bit about those, please? One of the titles is The Women Who Win, which is to guide women through to recognizing their own power, but without an ego, with actual love and without getting too stressed and actually enjoying the birth of children and guiding them to be the people that win, people of the new age, yes. to recognize indigo children, for instance. And um, the second book is The Power of Wealth and Attraction, which many males are already showing huge interest, and I can't imagine why. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's a book about understanding it is your birthright to be wealthy in whatever form you see it. Um, and again, using higher power, using energy that is beyond planet Earth, um, can become a normal way of life. And it is to your benefit in every walk of life that you are choosing to lead. Right. Okay. So basically, we all have a. You, you do believe in having a, a set path that we're set. We pre-program ourselves to have a set path. I, I firmly am of the belief that because due to past lives, um, we are already, if you like, programmed to where we are going before we come back to planet Earth. That has to be compatible with what we were doing in our last life here. Right. Okay. Uh, on Mother Earth. And it follows on like a serial in a book um, or like a series on the television, very, very similar to Emmerdale or Coronation Street. Yes. It has to be compatible with the last one. So therefore, it's, it, it helps us to understand where we've come from, what we've got up to, to know our personalities. Um, and um, yes, it, it's very, very knowledgeable and it helps us to live in our own space. So would you say that the, uh, the people that we're, we're surrounded by now, as in close family members, they've played a part in our past before? Most definitely. Yes, most definitely. We, we change roles, I hasten to add. I mean, men, it may sound strange to many people, and I can quite understand that, that are, that are not uh, aware of the full knowledge of higher power. Yes. But we, we can change sex. The males can be females and vice versa. Um, and our mothers can be our daughters, and our fathers can be our sons or brothers or uncles. And um, some people think that's a little bit bizarre, but it's only because of planet Earth teachings that it seems bizarre. Yes. Um, but most definitely, we do move in the same circles that we have, or similar circles that we have done in, in previous lives. And is that why some people come back with um, similar patterns, would you say? Of, or, or, most definitely. Wow. And any hang-ups and fears and phobias. And I have proved on several occasions over the, the long span, which is now coming up to 37 years I've been in the faculty, um, there is no doubt that a lot of these, by meditation, taking ourselves back into past lives with our fears and phobias, can have those eliminated. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have choose our family. We choose mm -hmm. the situation. Mm -hmm. and um, we choose which way we're going to, uh, what experiences we're going to have with the people that we've chosen. Yes. Right. Yes, pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this the same for uh, everyone out there, do you think? Is this, is this... Oh, yes, because we're all one huge family. Um, all of us living on planet Earth are just one huge family. And if we can once understand the art of, of unconditional love, um, of helping those, that, those lesser souls that, that are not privilege to have um, an understanding or a, a reasonably comfortable life, it's up to those that have the knowledge to be of service and help other folk. What purpose then can um, pain teach us? I mean, if, if people are going to come back and have very painful situations, yeah. be, it the, be it the loss of uh, close ones at a young age, be it an abusive family or, or, or whatever situation it may be, 
does the actual situation have to be painful? Well, I'm afraid that um, the, the main concept, as I understand it, um, on planet Earth is it's pure lessons. It's lessons and experiences of learning. It's putting right the wrongs that we've all well, managed to get up to in past lives. Yes. It, it's actually learning from those mistakes and it's also having the humility to help those souls that do have certain health conditions and difficulties. And that's up to the rest of us to support. Um, in, in my view, the, the greatest people on planet Earth are not the famous or the rich. The, the, in my view, the, the ones that deserve the highest accolades yes. are those people that help others. Um, those, in other words, that are to be of service. Right. And those are the marvellous people. Those are the ones that, that deserve the praise um, because of what they do. And, and it's normally done unconditionally. Yes, I was going to say that, yeah, unconditionally. And most times unaware to those that are doing it. Completely. And, and the majority of them are never known. Yes. Um, which yes. makes it even greater. Yes, um, And, uh, you know, one of, one of our problems is, of course, because we do have the colours black and white, on planet Earth, there are the dark souls and there are the light souls. And it's up to the light souls to be out there helping all those others to learn that they can become a light soul and can enjoy life. After all, Kevin, we all have restrictions on ourselves in one form or another. That's right. Um, you know, it's it from, from sort of, again, from the very well-known to the, to the very, very... Um, uh, low, uh, not low, to the very um, poor people that are always struggling financially. We all have um, problems of one sort or another to deal with. That's right. So, would you say there's any, anyone looking over us? I mean, um, such as angels? I mean, well, there's angel energy. I do believe in angels. Yes, I do believe in fairies. I do believe in lots of things that are going on. Even leprechauns. And whilst I was in Ireland, had quite a quite a number of experiences with the little people um that that reside over there so, i mean there are lots of different energies it's whatever the individual feels drawn to and um as i was joking yesterday with with people and saying there are naughty angels too you know and so yes there is a higher power everyone has a guide um some people find that very difficult to understand but everyone has an individual guide that is a soul who is not coming back to planet Earth. They are. They have volunteered to look after an individual um, while spending time on planet Earth. And and many people do experience a strange feeling. Um, and I'm sure you have um, some of those experiences, such as you, when you're driving and it's late at night yes. and you're really tired um, and it, it, and you're you're functioning. But you can't remember almost how you got home. But you're you're perfectly compassmentous. You're perfectly aware, but you can't actually remember. And you say, "Gee whiz, I was absolutely shattered last night." And that's when <laughs> the guide comes in, right, okay. and takes care of you. Okay. You know, when you can be and there's a horrendous storm, or there's an even worse, an awful accident. Somehow you get delayed. Something happens. You know, and you get delayed or you somehow miss the turn and go on another route and think, gee whiz, if I'd have gone on the route that I was normally going to go, I could have been involved in that accident. The power of coincidence, eh? Yeah. Yes. 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 Fate, call it what you will. But these are when these are when greater souls do take care of us. What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves? physically, emotionally, and spiritually. When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. 
help other people to speak to their higher selves, you can. Dolores Cannon has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT. Now you can learn her method by going directly to themoreshow.com forward slash QHHT and don't forget to mention the discount coupon More Talks. Going back to a question that we, we were sort of on earlier on, I mean, do you think there's such thing as evil and good? I mean... Yes, there has to be the yin and the yang. There has to be the dark and the light. Um, many, many folks, um, for instance, electricians, the negative and the positive, um, there always has to be, we cannot be a 100% white planet. Or if we were, then there would have to be a 100% black planet. Right, so you need the positive to experience the negative, basically. Yeah. The cold without knowing what the warm Absolutely. is. Absolutely. The cold and the heat, um, there has to be both for the balance of the planet. To have experience. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we all meet difficult people. We all meet awkward people. But uh, many, many of them, not all of them, once they've been given the right love, and the right conditions come out of their dark energy and come into the light. And they just need someone around them with love, unconditional love, and to allow them to grow in their own space. And many, many people come out of that dark energy. Is that on this level, why we're still alive? Or is that yes, we're... I'm firmly of the belief that sowing seeds within many people yes. may not germinate until future lives. Um, as long as they, some folk I do know, are not going to change in this lifetime. But the key is not to give up with them completely no. um, in the knowledge that you are um, sowing a seed, The one is sowing a seed, um, that is not necessarily going to germinate in this lifetime, but it could be in the next lifetime or even the next one. Okay, so basically when they go back home, if you want to call it that, yeah. does everyone go to the same place? I mean, if, if someone's murdered someone compared to someone that's lived a, a fairly normal average life, I mean, who's going where? Well, having not been recently... I can't say too much about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I haven't visited <laughs> yeah. just recently, um, and I don't. I hope not for a few more years. Of course, least. of course, we're keeping you right here. Don't but worry. I, may, I may send you a note. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do feel that there are places where people do have to be alone to think about what they've done, and I'm also because I've been in this in my faculty for so many years. I've yes. done lots of things and have lots of experiences. Um, and I am quite convinced that when we do go back home, as we will describe it, um, we actually watch the, the equivalent to a DVD um, when we get back. I used to say a video, but I've had to change it <laughs> to, to a DVD. Such is the change in technology, to that's see what right. what we've done. That's right. Um, and um, to see, see if we've helped planet Earth in some way. We are, at the end of the day, keepers of the planet. And we should all take a little bit, even if it's just a smidgen, a little bit of responsibility for what we are doing for planet Earth. That's the one big problem with um, with people nowadays. It's that they, they want everything by the click of a button, don't they? Yes, I'm and, afraid um, so. But by the same token, there are still lots of beautiful people. Yes. Um, and I, I don't mean the looks of a person. I mean what's going on inside them. That's right. And what's going on around them as well, yeah. what, what they're up to. That's right. Yes. So and, and such as that we are in these difficult times at the moment, I feel in many ways it's also liberation um, for lots of folk, in as much that if we can get back to basics in many ways and and look at look at the world through different eyes, can actually recognize you can be a lot happier well that's right i mean you know surely the uh, what's going on right now with the uh, with the credit crunch yeah. and um, the amount of uh, job losses on the horizon and yeah. the amount of um, job losses already taken place in america where i've just recently come back from yes. um it's pretty bad but yet is that not their path if someone's going to lose their home was well, it meant to be you you see let me tell you a, a rather well two couples of uh, two two stories that uh, are, are rather amusing, and the final outcome is beautiful. Um, a gentleman was made redundant uh, now, round about 18 months ago, 
and he didn't know what to do. He and his wife sat there on the kitchen table looking very traumatized. And he said, uh, what do you think to selling this place? Fortunately, in those days, they could sell their house. So they put it up for sale and sold it. And they bought a boat. And they, bought, and they are now on the canals. And he didn't have a job. And he was going past a, a boat and a chap was painting it. And um, he said, you know, I, I would like to do our boat. Huh. And um, so last summer he sat painting his boat and someone else came along and said, you wouldn't do ours, would you? We would like to have done it. Yes, certainly. And to cut a long story short, now he has his own business. He does painting on the barges, on the narrow boat. He has a, a little workshop where he does buckets and the uh, plant holders um, does um, the doors that go on the boats. And he said, you know, I am wealthier, not money-wise, but I am wealthier in the knowledge that I am happy and very content. And he said, and if I don't like my neighbors, I simply move. <laughs> <laughs> what a fan- fantastic <laughs> that, that's a beautiful story. story. Yeah. And another yeah. young lady that I saw up in Barnsley, and um, she said, I just can't afford this mortgage. And I don't want to let my parents down, but I just can't afford it. And I said, well, go on a boat. Oh, she said, what a gorgeous idea. But what will my parents say? I said, it's your life. Your parents want to see you happy. Yes. And I had an email from her a year later to say, I've done what she said, and I'm really, really happy. And we have parties and invite all the other boat people um, at weekends. And we, I have a fabulous life. She still has her day job, but she now lives on a boat. Yeah, I mean, isn't that going towards the, uh, doing the thing that you'd love to do? That your heart tells you That your heart you tells to you to do, that's right, yes. Or is it your soul, your real soul, that you house with you in every past life? You cannot trade your soul in. No. The same soul is with you whether you are a cat or dog or tree, and it comes in to you in the, in the physical form. Or is it your soul, we call it heart, of course, solar plexus to the heart, is it the soul that actually is guiding us? You know when you have a decision to make and yes. your head is telling you one thing and yet you have a gut feeling telling you something entirely the opposite. And so you say, no, I'll be jolly sensible and go by head and manage to get yourself into a situation that you don't want to be, into a dark space. And then you think, if I'd have listened to my gut feeling, I wouldn't have gone down this route. So are you saying that your mental state, your head will never actually give you the happiness that your soul or heart will. That's right. Absolutely. Because our, our brains are practical. They are the functions that tell us how to cross the road, how to drive the car, how to um, look after the home, how to be responsible for our children, for, for our family. Um, heads are abs- an absolute necessity. But when it comes to feelings, um, falling in love with someone, for instance, you don't actually say, well, should I fall in love with this person? What do I think? Let me have a look at the checklist. It doesn't work that way, does no, it? No, that's right. It doesn't. It's all part of the feeling, like you say. Yes, that's right. And, you know, I've heard parents, well, why have you chosen him? Well, I don't know. It just yeah. feels right. That's right. That's <laughs> that is, right. That is the difference. And, and to be able to differentiate between the two is actually very, very important. And that's where the art of meditation and yoga and tai chi and all of these exercises are good for the soul. Yes. So would you say we're here? I mean, this this comes down to a sort of rhetorical question, but I mean, are we here to find out what love's about, are we? Is it about connecting with ourselves or re-remembering yes. ourselves? Is an actual fact to understand that happiness and our experiences on planet Earth can be good, but we do have to apply unconditional love. Um, and that is a, a very huge lesson, very huge energy. Yes. But it can be beautiful. And once we get into that space, life can be very good. Um, I, I'm a great believer in Buddhism. And um, fortunately, not too far from where I live, we, ha- we have a Buddhist center. And whilst I am not a full practicing Buddhist, um, I do believe in their meditation groups. And you can walk into a building where, where they practice, and the energy is so rich with love. It is unbelievable. And to spend two or three hours in one of their temples or their buildings is 
so energizing. Yes. If people haven't experienced it, then I strongly suggest they do, because you come out feeling totally different to when you go in. Yes. And it, it's all about love. And it's, it's nothing, we, we seem to be a planet that has become so involved and so neurotic about money. And yet money does never bring happiness. No, it, it might bring a fix, but it doesn't bring the happiness. And it's that, that all knowing inside of, that makes us more content. Do you think that if you go along the path of doing that, which you'd love to do, knowing that you may not make a lot of money out of it, but yet it turns out to sort of, you know, do quite well. Is money just a, like, a movement of energy, would you think? Yes, I do. And also, then we come into health. Again, not far from where I live, we have a huge, huge um, company. And I'm very fortunate in as much that my gift can actually see companies that are negative and positive. It's not actually anything to do with how much money they make or how secure one is. Actually, ah, right. Yeah, it's actually to do with whether the company carries a dark energy or a light energy. And if a sensitive soul goes to work for a dark energy organization, and in actual fact, I've put this on the letter on my website very recently. And if they um, uh, are very sensitive and work for a dark energy, it can actually make them poorly, can actually affect health, because you are working in... Um, an energy that is not compatible with yours. So would you say that's what the reason for, for a lot of these big foreclosures, some of these um, huge companies in the US which have took a ripple effect over here in the UK? It could be. It most definitely could be a contributory factor. A generalization, yeah. And because yeah. Mother Earth is changing her energies and she's not letting all of these organizations get away with it, she is wanting to get more uh, back to her more natural state. In actual fact, we could say at another level, Mother Earth is actually saving herself. Basically, what we're saying here is um, is that the Earth is as conscious as we are, really. Absolutely. Uh, and and the, uh, there are some workshops um, throughout the world that actually can uh, that do operate and can feel the heartbeat of uh, Mother Earth. And uh, whilst I've never been on one, I certainly would love to go. And uh, so I cannot say whether it is or whether it isn't, but I certainly would love to go and experience that, um, that she does have a pulse. Um, if we've been naughty children, then Mother Earth is going to tell us off. A couple of questions that have come up from, um, from people that have emailed in is, what was there before spirit? Was there just spirit or was there the universe first or which, which came first? Well, obviously, I don't have all of the answers. It's only my belief system and books that I've read other people who have greater knowledge than, than I do. And I certainly feel that we have both. We have the universe, um, which is millions and trillions and billions of years old. Um, and consequently, if we have that, then we have spirit. The two, from what I feel, what feels comfy within my knowledge of what I've learned, is that they, they are, they're both running in line with each other. And it's almost as though I have to say, people say, well, where do we go? Well, where do we go? No one's dropped us a note, have they? No. You know, we can, we can go through meditation, we can have people talking to us, but not everyone believes everything that, that people tell us, do we? Um, but my belief, um, because I've done um, such good mediumship work over the years, my belief is our world and the world we move to run side by side. So it's heaven on earth almost. Absolutely. And I, I feel that that's because there are some people that when they're asleep, they say, do you know, I see all my relatives. And I said, well, they're not visiting you. You're actually visiting them. Are you saying that when we sleep, you know, we do leave our body and we do we go do. somewhere else? We do. And as my dear husband, who analyzes everything, <laughs> being a Virgo, of course, said, well, who's to say we're asleep? It's only the body that sleeps. Yes. But what do we do? Those eight hours, it's a tremendous time to be um, out of um, being sort of in control. It's a long time to be out of the planet. What are we doing? It's a very, and I would love to research that and know a lot, lot more about it. Um, and some people wake up really tired. You know, they could have been really busy doing other things. Um, and who's to say 
um, which is quite thought-provoking, that we only think we're here. We're not actually here. The body's here, but yeah. we're not actually here. We're too busy getting on with the other world. Right. Well, that's a thought in its own right, isn't <laughs> and it? And I'm sure some people, that will, will trigger some thoughts up with many, many people that know a lot more than I do. Well, that sounds a bit like The Matrix to me. <laughs> well done. You know, I mean, that was a very spiritual movie of its time, I think, really. Completely. You know, Completely. In, in, in the and, and as my eldest son says... Um, you know, Mother, who's been an avid follower of Star Wars ever since they began, when he was young, age of seven. And he is a firm believer, and being brought up in a spiritual environment, um, he is a firm believer that a lot of the theories in Star Wars are fact. Yeah, I mean, the idea of um, an Obi-Wan Kenobi and being killed off by the evil Darth Vader, yet mm. saying at the sort of famous lines where, you know, you can kill me, but I will live forever. Absolutely. Right. With a greater belief than perhaps they even realise yes. when making them. Some people say, well, I don't know where all that information came from. I'm writing a book, I don't know why I've written that, but yeah. it does seem right. And yeah. it's almost a greater force is guiding them to this. Do you think then that um, when people pass on, I mean, you know, some people are very scared of death. They're very scared of death because they think it's going to be internal uh, nothingness. Do you think that when we do pass on, it's a case of, we create exactly where we want to be, exactly what we want to be doing. It, it um, runs parallel to the life that we've led. And I am of a, a firm um, belief that if we do our best on this planet for others and consciously try not to harm other people, we all harm other people at times. Of course. It's just one of those things, yes. I'm afraid. There's different types of energy in people. It's inevitable that this happens. But if we, if we do our best and if we um, try not to hurt people and to do our best and do our best for the planet, then we automatically, as I was saying earlier, um, it follows in a book. The serial will follow in a book. So you will never, in my view, be put into an environment that is incompatible with the way you've been leading your life. So in such a case, there is no hell. Hell's what we make it. We can have hell on earth if we choose. We can have a hell anywhere. Yeah, so when we pass, you know, this concept of if the evils go to hell, the good is go to, to heaven. Are we saying that there's only sort of one place one can go, and um, it's up to us how we create that place we go to? It's no different to planet Earth, is it? We, no. What we, mirror, we only get a mirror image back of ourselves. Stressed people have stressed lives. Horrible yes. people have horrible lives. It's, it's kind of the mirror image. And sometimes you say, well, how does he get away with it? He's a horrible person. Look at him swimming around this and the other. And what I have to say there is, yes, but the time is not right. You have to leave it to greater power. He could have done so many damaging things that the energy has to build up to such a crescendo for it to karmically come back on him. And that is out of the control of anyone and everyone on planet Earth. It has to be handed over to greater power. So basically, we can do whatever we want in this life as long as it's not knowingly harming somebody else. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay. And, and also, if it's compatible with your thinking. Yes. If you it, know, doesn't it has to sit comfortably with you. It, it's no good trying to be the president of America, for instance. We were just chatting, the president of America. Yes. If there's already one incognito and, and doing very well, thank you. It's no good trying to push him off. And it, We have to do things that are, are um, in keeping with who we are. And the See danger ourselves. that we have is when we look for jobs that are going to make a lot of money. And that's where we have a danger. I mean, there are natural people around who are accountants. My eldest grandson would make a marvellous accountant yes. because he's so quick with, with figures in his head. It blows my mind. I'm absolutely useless. Um, and now. he would, would sit, if he so chose, to be a fantastic accountant. But he would do it because he loves figure work, not because he's looking for the money. If the no. money comes, it's not because he's wanting to make the That's money. Right. It's because he's enjoying That's it. my Do's point thing. exactly. Do the things you would love to do and don't base it on, on the money. Don't base yes. it on, on the material outlook. I mean, is it not true to say that um, some people view success as how much, you know, the gain they've got out of it, what they've gained from it, but isn't really success the completion of something rather than what the outcome is going to be? Uh, absolutely. Totally, totally agree. And unfortunately, um, and here in the West especially, 
many, many people are so impressed with a large house and a large car. Yeah. And, and all the materialistic items that fit in with it. The person can be absolutely awful, but we are so impressed. We never seem, or a lot of people, never seem impressed by someone who does a great deal of good um, and perhaps lives in a, a very ordinary rented house, isn't interested in the property, but spends all his or her time on going out and helping. I know a wonderful guy um, in Leicester, and he's on many, he's, his name is Ali Luddock, and he does all of his therapies free of charge and asked for a donation um, for the law hospice in Leicester. He says, I have enough to live on. What do I need more money for? And he drives around in an old Merc. Um, and he's a very insignificant guy at one level. But at another level, he is so huge and so wonderful. And, and where are those people? And he's perfectly happy. So happy in his space. And everyone loves him for his spirituality and what he is doing. Um, somewhere along the line, and maybe what has been happening to us in this credit crunch, we are now beginning to see just how we can live happily without all this money and control. I think this is a, a sort of bigger change than the, the sort of than we've been led to believe, really. I mean, the recessions that have gone on before, I think this is in a, a whole um, global bigger design sort of scale than really what most people think is what's Complete going on. Complete uniqueness. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think it's not going away. I think there's a lot more to go, change to come yet, but probably change that needs to happen. Most definitely. And and people, I mean, it's as I've said, um, I said in one of my letters, a moving day for all of us happens at some stage. And it's chaos. Yes. Everything has to come out of the house. We don't yes. know where anything is. We don't know if we're going to like the new property. You know, the removal men take everything out, and you think, my God, I'm not in control. <sighs> I've been there, yeah. Everything goes out, and you stand, and the place looks bare and horrible, and you think, gee whiz, you know, have I done right? This is... And you look at the new property, and you think, how am I going to make this a home? How am I going to create it? And we do, and after a while, we think, do you know, I'm very pleased I've moved. Well, uh, the credit crunch is a bit like that. It's... We're going through the chaos and the change, and we're worried, and we're thinking, where will we finish up? And yet if we trust that higher power, and higher power has taken control, and Mother Earth has taken control, because we only rent space off her, That's right. and all is said and done, in all of this chaos, and through love, we will be looked after, and we'll finish up where we finish up, and it'll all be okay. Staying with the spiritual questions just for now, we have two more questions really from, uh, okay. from this, is... When we pass on, we still carry on creating. Can we still enjoy the pleasures of the body? I mean, can you still have sex when you pass well, on? Well, I mean... the pleasures of sex actually was only created so we could propagate and so we could bring forth um, other souls through. To But it had to be pleasurable and done through love. But you don't need to do that once you've passed over. And that is an earthly desire. Right. Um, it is a physical desire, um, which is perfectly normal and perfectly healthy. And, but it is designed so that we can um, produce other keepers of planet yeah. Earth. So probably when you have moved on, it wouldn't be of, of the top priority, really. You know, you'd be more... Because you're so happy. And, yeah. and a lot of people, when we do pass over, um, certainly 50% of people are in pain and yes, they indeed. are suffering. And, and it's far more important that the pain from the body has gone and that they can meet other loved ones sure. that have gone over. Um, and so there is a bigger picture. Yes, of course. There's a big party as such, and it's uh, once the party's over, you've got to figure out what you're going to do, haven't you? Yeah, and also remember, you don't have the worry of having to earn money. <laughs> no, no, no. So you can sit around and chat to your friends and yep. and enjoy some of the things that you didn't have the time to do, such as, as you know, walking. And remember, animals go over just the of same. Course. The dog that you had will be yes. there waiting for you. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, many people um, go and see others in a coffin and they say, do you know, they look so happy. All their lines have gone. They look so fantastic because they have left the old carcass. You know, and I make many people laugh. And, that, and hopefully some of the people listening to this will too. Looking sure. after a carcass, you know, is great, very hard work. You That's have right. to feed it. You have to water it. 
You have to put um, creams into the skin so it doesn't dry. Yep. You have to make sure it gets fresh air. You have to walk it. And as it gets older, it's very high maintenance. <laughs> it's almost a full-time job. It is, it is. And, and so when you leave the planet, you don't have to do that either. <laughs> no, that's right. It's, uh, it's a full-time job, like you say, yeah. Definitely. As we get older, you know, and we have... Um, we have medication and we have to take one thing that sets another an, another problem off and um, it is it, it's a full time it's a full time interest mm-hmm. as we get older what's your views on God the word God I mean a lot of religions would have us uh, say that God is separate and um, it's an altogether separate being from us then you listen to the spiritual books and you, you, you read and you, you, you talk to other people and they say, no, it's, it, it's us. God is us. Well, that's true. I, um, I remember giving a talk in the early days of um, working with my vacation and it was um, a farmer's um, union. Um, actually, I think it was in Staffordshire. And um, I threw it out questions and they said, do you believe in the Bible? And I said, well, yes, to a certain extent, I do. Um, But at the end of the day, it is a newspaper, isn't it? It's because who have written it? Other people. Other people have written it. And it goes all over the world. So it is, to a certain extent, the belief of others. And if if it fits in with what we feel, then it's right, isn't it? That's right. And we can take bits of it. We don't have to feel controlled by all of it. So if the Bible is good for some people, then that is good. But it's only written by human beings. And it's, and if they say God works through them, well, we don't do anything different, as I was saying a little earlier, that people write such as Star Wars, and they know where the information's come from. So who is feeding the information? And if we read our history books going back thousands and thousands of years, there have been many gods and goddesses. I felt follow the goddess, um, um, Isis because she was believed to be the goddess of children and seeing that children's welfare was taken care of Yes. and as I'm very very um, aware of what children's needs are um, I choose and that's what I say I choose to follow her belief system so if you like yes I do believe in a goddess my worry is that if we get involved in saying we follow a god, invariably children are taught that it is a male sitting on a throne. And I know I believed that when I was young, and that is not so and that is worrying. A because it's a male and B it's someone of high importance sitting on a throne. Now I cannot accept that. Um but if it's right for an individual, then it's right for them. And if it helps them to exist on planet Earth, then that's right um, for for the individual. Um, But there are many gods and goddesses um, in our history books, and we should follow the one that suits us as individuals. I would hate to think I was uh, separate from God. I would like to think I am having an experience on his behalf, and he is having an experience on my behalf. That's right. Um, We're one of the same. That's right. But you did say his. Well, I did. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to call it it. <laughs> well, quite, quite. Um, but it is an energy again, isn't it's, it? It's the so energy, we... yes. I, I think it's us. I think it's me, you. I think it's everything's one. If you wish to give it a label, then that suits you, like you said his, yes. that's fine. But if I want to say her, that's also fine. Of course. And the other intriguing um, little quip that I, I just want to put, and hopefully it won't annoy too many people, if you spell God the other way around, what does it spell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of, we get hooked on our labels, don't we? Yeah, we do, we do. We, we, we love do. our labels. We, we, we don't feel at home unless we've given something a label. And then we can sit with that label. Calling something an energy does not necessarily sit comfortably with many folk. Well, do you think there was a point at one time where if there was an energy that was all one, um, you know, we, we maybe said to ourselves, look, to have an, a, a real experience of knowing what, what love is, we need to go into a material world and, and really feel love. Absolutely. One of my ambitions before leaving planet Earth is to hire Wembley Arena and to do a full 
invitation there to have every seat filled <sighs> and to Wonderful. take the whole the whole of those folk through a beautiful meditation um, and feel the energy and see what happens and see where it takes them. Oh, okay. And that would be absolutely fantastic. That sounds great. Obviously, there would have to be people, we would have to be very careful on the people going in because you would have to have genuine believers. We yes. couldn't take too many that would disrupt the energy. Yes. But can you imagine how beautiful that would it be? It would be amazing. It really would and be it, amazing. And, and it's, of course, it's not square because we, we need the ovalness of it, you see, for the energy circulating. And I feel everyone that would have a seat in that arena would feel a profound shift yeah. within themselves. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Perhaps we can arrange it sometime. Well, perhaps we can do through our show, yeah. I mean, if we uh, get enough people uh, thinking on the same wavelength. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, there's no promises. Uh, I mean, but, uh, yeah, that would if be If the universe wants us to do it, then I'm sure that they will have oh, I, 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 I think uh, I think so. Cosmic ordering, that's right. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Talking about cosmos, I mean, what's your views on um, life out there except for us? I mean, you know. There's... Oh, there has to be. We, we cannot live in um, arrogance or ignorance. Um, that there are other, are other beings and other energies yes. out there very, very strongly. Um, and I do feel if they wish to make themselves known to us, then they would do it. Um, it, it's, um, it it's very limiting as not believing there are greater, a greater planets than us. There are certain beliefs that people um, have that there are um, seven, uh, seven planets uh, including ourselves, and we are the most basic, which I can quite understand. Um, but I, I have to say, I, I really do not know enough about that. Um, but I would certainly, certainly believe and do believe that there are greater beings than us that have. I mean, if you look at the fact that our brain capacity and, and how what a small amount we use of the brain, there has to be other beings out there that use a jolly sight more than we do. Well, that's right. When you think how we think we are so uh, technology advanced, I mean, you know, we, we can't even really predict earthquakes properly. Yes, the trouble is with us, I'm afraid to say, that the technological side um, has moved forwards. But it, it, the other side of us has not moved forwards at all. Um, the knowledge, the, the learning about outer space, the learning about other things going on, um, the spiritual side tying yes. up with it, the yes. art of meditation, um, that side has and, and is not taught in schools. Um, and that is, a, that is a great pity. To a certain extent, um, losing religious instruction has been a, been a great sadness. Because it did take people on that route to a certain extent in preparation I, um, for older life. I think it did, yes. yes it, it did. It, 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 you know, to teach that is very, very good. I remember in my early days, a lot of that has stood me in good stead where I am today. But, you know, I, I really do feel we should be moving forward as a progressive world to take people... <clears throat> I'm understanding um, meditation, the art of astral travel, the art of, um, of finding higher beings. I actually do feel that we have a responsibility to teach our young that in a loving, controlled environment. Of course, indeed. Okay, well, uh, one other quick question. Who would you like to win for the uh, US electoral? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh, what a question. Ah, um, I, I don't think, quite honestly, it would be either of them. But if I have to, if I have to make a choice of who I feel it will be, yep. that is the burning question. It's because it's, um, it, it, it's, I think, who we, who we actually feel that it will be. And I have to say, I feel that it will be Barack Obama. I can only say out of the two... Um, I think that's a good thing. Yes, I think he's fresh. He's young. He's he's um, got a lot of energy, and I feel he will bring about change. Needed change, yeah. Well, that's it. That's all we've got time for, Patricia. I'd like to thank you so much for being on the first show. You've made it so smooth. You've made my work a lot easier. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much, and we'd love to have you back on once we've got your book written. We'll do a few giveaways. Um, look after yourself. Yes, I feel so privileged. And thank you very much for inviting me and good luck to everyone who's listening. And if you have any queries or anything you'd like to know that I can possibly help in any way, just um, get in touch with me 
and uh, have a look at my website and hope to speak to you soon. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.